What can happen when a beam of light is incident on the surface of any object? When a light beam is incident on the surface of any object, a part of the light can be reflected by the object, a part of the light can be transmitted. That is, it may pass through the object and get out from the other side and a part of the light can also be absorbed by the object. The amount of light reflected, absorbed or transmitted depends on the material that the object is made up of. The surface of a mirror is shiny and opaque and most of the light rays are reflected from it. On the other hand, glass is an example of a transparent object. It will transmit most of the light. What is refraction? Refraction is the change in direction of light as it passes across the boundary separating two media caused by its change in speed. Yes, if it is incident at this angle, then it goes through at another angle. Consider a transparent object kept here, say a glass lamp. Suppose light travelling through air is incident obliquely on the surface of the glass. Now this light will bend at the boundary of the two media. Here, the two media are air and glass. This bending of light at the boundary of the two media is what we call refraction of light. We see that at this point, the light bends. It's not going straight. What are these two mediums called? The medium from where the light is incident is called the incident medium and the medium where refraction occurs is called a refractive medium. Similarly here as well, the light is travelling from one medium to another medium. It's from glass to air. What is this angle called? It's called the angle of incidence and is denoted by the letter I. It is an angle made by the incident ray with the normal. And this is the angle made by the refracted ray with the normal. It's called the angle of refraction R. If the refractive medium is optically denser compared to incident medium, then the refracted ray will bend towards the normal. And if it's optically rarer, it will bend away from the normal. Note that the light is incident obliquely on the surface. When the incident light is perpendicular to the surface, it does not change its direction. The change in direction of light occurs because of the change in the speed of light in that medium. When light enters another medium, there is a change in its speed. The speed may either increase or decrease depending on the medium. When the light is entering into the glass at an angle, it travels at a lesser speed than in air and when it goes from glass to air, its speed increases. So it's because of this change in speed that the direction of light changes. When light is travelling from an optically rarer medium to an optically denser medium, its speed will decrease and it will bend towards the normal. Whereas, when the light is travelling from an optically denser medium to an optically rarer medium, its speed will increase and it will bend away from the normal. Laws for refraction There are two laws of refraction. The first law of refraction says that the incident ray, refracted ray and the normal at the point of incidence all lie in the same plane. It means that if I were to draw this on a piece of paper, they all will be on the plane of paper and not out of the paper. The second law is also called Snell's law of refraction. Snell's law gives us the relation between the incident and refraction angles and the refractive indices of the mediums. In simple words, it tells us that the ratio of the sine of the angle of incidence to the sine of the angle of refraction is equal to the refractive index of the second medium with respect to the first medium. Now look at the term on the right. It is constant for light of a given colour and for the given pair of media. What is the refractive index of a medium? It is the extent to which the refractive medium increases or decreases the speed of light. Mathematically, it is the ratio of the speed of light in the incident medium to the speed of light in the refractive medium. It's denoted by n and the two numbers in the base are the two mediums. We read this as refractive index of medium 2 with respect to the incident medium 1. Also, v1 and v2 are speeds of light in medium 1 and 2 respectively. So we can also say that sin i over sin r is v1 over v2. 
absolute refractive index, if you remember, is the refractive index of a medium with respect to vacuum. We just use some very basic math. We can write this ratio like this, where C is the speed of light in vacuum. Yes, if you simplify this ratio, we will get V1 over V2. And can you guess what the numerator and the denominator are equal to? That's right. This is nothing but the absolute refractive index of medium 2 and this is the absolute refractive index of medium 1. We can also say that sin i over sin r is n2 over n1, where n2 and n1 are the absolute refractive indices of media 2 and 1 respectively. So these were the two laws of refraction of light. Let's try to solve a simple example based on this. Here is a question on your screen. Go through it carefully. We are given the refractive index of glass with respect to air as 1.50. Here, air is the incident medium and glass is the refractive medium. Let us take medium 1 as air and medium 2 as glass. So, N21 is equal to 1.50. But what is N21 equal to? Yes, it's equal to speed of light in medium 1 over the speed of light in medium 2. Here V1 is speed of light in air and V2 is the speed of light in glass. But we aren't given any of the two values. We want to find out the speed of light in glass. And for that, we need the speed of light in air. We can write V2 as V1 over 1.5. The value of speed of light in air is very close to the value of speed of light in vacuum. Hence, we can substitute this value in place of speed of light in air. After doing a bit of math, we will get the speed of light in glass as 2 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second. Don't forget the units. We see that the speed of light in glass is lesser. What is lateral shift? When a ray is incident on the surface of a transparent medium such as glass, its position changes laterally when it goes out of the medium. This shift of the refracted ray laterally is called a lateral shift. Simple application of refraction of light. Put a coin at the bottom of the trough containing water to a depth H. When viewed from above, the bottom of the trough and the coin appear to be raised. This change in the perceived depth of an object in a tensor medium as observed from a rarer medium is known as vertical shift. Refractive index mu of a material is the ratio of real depth H to apparent depth H dash. Thus, Apparent depth is the ratio of real depth to the refractive index. Vertical shift denoted as delta H is equal to the difference of real depth and apparent depth. By substituting the values of H and H dash, we get the expression of vertical shift as H multiplied by 1 minus 1 divided by mu. Oh. Oh. When the light rays coming from the tip of the magic wand pass from water to air, they change their direction, that is, they get refracted. When these refracted rays reach our eyes, our eyes trace them backward as straight lines. <laughs> Due to this, the rays appear to come from a point slightly above the original position. Hence, the magic <laughs> wand appears to be bent in water. Critical angle and total internal reflection. We know that when a light ray passes from denser to rarer medium, it partially refracts to the rarer medium and bends away from the normal and partially reflects back into the denser medium. This reflection is known as the internal reflection. In case of refraction from denser to rarer medium, the angle of refraction R is greater than the angle of incidence I. If another light ray with higher angle of incidence is considered, 
its angle of refraction will also be correspondingly higher. If the angle of incidence of the light ray is gradually increased, then for a specific angle of incidence, when the angle of refraction in the rarer medium becomes 90 degrees, the refracted light grazes along the interface. This angle of incidence in the denser medium is called the critical angle C for the pair of media under consideration. That means if I is equal to C, then R is equal to 90 degrees. Let N21 be the refractive index of the rarer medium with respect to the denser medium. Let N12 be the refractive index of the denser medium with respect to the rarer medium. We know that N12 is equal to 1 by N21. As per Snell's law, N21 is equal to sine I by sine R, which is equal to sine C by sine 90. Therefore, N21 is equal to sine C. Or, N12 is equal to 1 by sine C. This means, the refractive index of the denser medium with respect to rarer medium, N12, is equal to 1 by sine C. If the angle of incidence is made larger than the critical angle, the incident light cannot refract to the rarer medium and is completely reflected back into the denser medium. This is known as total internal reflection. Since there is no transmission of light to rarer medium, light get completely reflected back to the denser medium. That is, it gets totally internally reflected. Essential conditions for total internal reflection for light to have total internal reflection, it must satisfy the following conditions. 1. It must propagate from denser medium to rarer medium and 2. The angle of incidence must be greater than the critical angle for the pair of media. Examples of total internal reflection A mirage is caused by the total internal reflection of light. When the sun is high in the sky, the sand gets hot before the layers of air above it. Light rays from trees travel from an optically denser air layer to a rarer layer and hence bend away from the normal. This bending continues till a stage is reached where the angle of incidence becomes greater than the critical angle and total internal reflection takes place. The totally reflected rays that reach the eyes appear to come from a point on the ground where the image of the tree is formed. Thus, we see inverted images of trees even though there is no water around. Another example of total internal reflection is the sparkling of diamond. Diamond has a high refractive index of 2.42 and the critical angle for the diamond air interface is 24.4 degrees. Diamonds are cut in such a way that most of the light rays entering the diamond undergo total internal reflection many times before they exit. This gives diamonds their bright sparkle. Another application of total internal reflection is in optical fibers. Optical fiber is usually fabricated from glass or quartz and consists of core and cladding. The refractive index of the core material is a little higher than that of cladding material. When light is allowed to enter the core in such a way that the angle of incidence at the core cladding interface is greater than the critical angle, it will undergo successive total internal reflections all along its path in the core. Since the loss of energy is quite small in case of total internal reflection, light can be transmitted over longer distances through optical fiber with least loss of energy. In communication systems, 
optical fiber cables are used to transmit video and audio signals at the speed of light.